What's up, everybody? Welcome to an, another episode here on Palangi Studio of Rock, only on Radio Wigwam. Let us know where you're tuning in here, because we are going digitally worldwide here right now. Shout out to some of our supporters, Envious Music Magazine and Alyssa Ebersold Concert Photography. So if you guys need reviews or live concert footage, they are the ones to go to. Now today we have Zach and Rex. Lo love the love Rex, especially the way it's spelled from the band uncured going on here from new jersey what's up everybody hey thank you guys so much for having us very excited to be here hello not often i do two people at once i think i've interviewed that uh i think once or twice before so it's it's cool having two people on rather than one person yeah no we we've uh we've been doing a lot of interviews lately and um I feel like it gets a nice flow that's right yeah we do it we've done a few together and when i uh bumble he uh steps in <laughs> <laughs> and everybody tuning in for the video version here too they are twins believe it or not you're not you're not seeing one person duplicated they are twins everybody uh frank, frank i hate to correct you on your show but we are actually two years apart <laughs> are you no way you uh, i would have lost a bet well, I mean, we can go with it for this call, just, you know, for that. But, <laughs> um, but we, we've been doing this a long time, and it's, you know, I'd say, like, old married couples start to look more alike. That's sort of what's happening. Yeah. Yeah, you get into it. You guys, your voices sound very, very similar. Yeah, in, in speaking? Yeah, and, and in uh, uh, growling and stuff like that and screaming. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, just, you know. I uh, got the same genetics, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's good that you guys, what made you guys want to do music together? Because I know some brothers, they're just like, dude, you know, I'm doing this. We don't play together right. Things are clashing. Uh, I, you know, we actually never really experienced that um, because I think music is one of those things that brings people together. And um, it, it seems really counterintuitive. That for us to both want to be musicians and not be doing something together that doesn't make a lot of sense but um you know yeah we, you know, we don't really have that kind of brotherly like clashing of heads um we we got things working really smoothly so it's you know it's it's great to get to to be in this position yeah we've been playing guitar together since we were uh, 10 and 12 and oh wow yeah we pretty much you know like most people we started off with just like uh the squire a practice set with the uh the amp that's included we uh, picked it up and we quit a few times, had lessons here and there, but it um, didn't really stick until we were probably like, you know, 14 and 15-ish. And, um, and from there, we just started playing together and then uh, writing songs together. What, uh, what kind of guitars do you guys use? Let's start off. I love talking about brands and gear. But yeah, we're, we're Schechter-sponsored artists. So what do you think? Yeah, so um, we have a... Nice variety of Schecters. Currently, I'm playing the, uh, we're each actually playing the JL7 from, what, 2016 or 2017? 2017. The 2017 model, which I believe is the last one they made. Last one they made. Oh, uh, okay. And we have the uh, Schecter Hellraiser um, C7 as our uh, backups for touring. Okay. Is Are they six string or seven strings you guys use? All seven string, yeah. So, yeah, we play um, always B standard tuning. Okay. I'll just you know, clarify. I'm sure you know, but if somebody doesn't, it's a six string with a, another string on the bottom of that, which is tuned to B. So, uh, you know, just, you know, traditional fourths on the mm -hmm. bottom. So it's not a drop tuning. And uh, we do have a lot of, you know, parts that are in different keys and stuff. So uh, we don't change guitars, but since we use Axe Effects, mm -hmm. we just use a, um, a pitch block. And, ah, uh, okay. All right. So much easier because, you know, if you're, we have our set, coordinated to just one click the whole way through yep i'll pick up my guitar and put it down multiple times throughout the set but um you know zach and uh, our bassist don't really have the ability to do that quite as much so everything is just coordinated yeah i noticed that do you like coming out on stage with the vocals first because i just seen some footage of you guys and because there's a lot of energy and then you're like wait a minute he's picking up a guitar <laughs> <laughs> well, see, what you just described is exactly what we're going for yeah start with okay one, and then it's like okay i feel like i've seen it. it's like but wait there's more yeah that's that's, that's kind right. of the goal so um we want to keep things you know as fresh as possible and i see i see like uh you know stars and other genres of music doing that all the time like I'll, I'll give you two examples, for example, like yeah. Sean Mendes does it all the time, Machine Gun Kelly, right? Not necessarily a big fan of either of them, 
But it's exciting when they get a guitar, and then it's exciting when they put it back down. So I was like, mm -hmm. why, why aren't any bands in rock and metal doing this kind of thing? Yeah, even like Daughtry, I noticed. I mean, he's a singer, but he does play some electric and some acoustic on some of the songs. Because some of the songs, they need three guitar parts with, with their stuff. So and it's it's cool. It's I I like variety too, and I think you give that to the audience that way. Uh, just wait till we can get one of those big old grand pianos on stage. Too. <laughs> but you don't need them nowadays, though. You know what I mean? They have really good keyboards that sound. I know it's not exactly the same thing, but they sound. Let's say ninety eight percent, maybe ninety five percent close. I, no, I would even concede the point and say they can sound hundred percent as accurate. But it's the aesthetic, right? You know, mm -hmm. you have that big, glorious grand piano. You stand up on top of it. That's totally different <laughs> than if you have a little keyboard. Yeah. So if you guys did a huge stage show, that's what you'd want. You'd want a keyboard, or a, not a keyboard, a, a piano right up there, and you'd get on top of it. Because I noticed you get on top of that box a lot, too. Oh, that's right. Those yeah. are actually our um, drum hardware cases. So one, well, one is a drum hardware case, and one is... The poor drummer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, one, one of these days... I'm definitely going to put a foot through it because I can feel it like bouncing a little bit, giving. Yeah. You might want to tape that up underneath a little bit. Uh, Reinforce I... it with something. Yeah. Put a board underneath it. Let's just hope that we get it on uh, camera when it right. fall right. off. We've been using those since 2017, so they've uh, made it this far. There you go. What company's that? Because the props to that company. I think it's called... Um, Road. I'm oh, check. Yeah, it's yeah. called like Road Run, not Road Runner. Road, Road Ready. Road Ready. Okay, I've never heard of them. Yeah, I mean, I've been. Uh, I've That's been cool. For yeah, over five years, almost five there years you now. Go, yeah. <laughs> so you guys, right now, audio version. I know you guys can't see this, but they are in a studio because I just seen some sound panels. Yeah. Is that your own studio that you guys own? So this is Conclave Studios. And it's kind of our home base for all operations. Okay. So, yeah, actually, everything everything that we record is tracked in this little. Well, you guys can't see. Uh, Frank can see me, but nobody else can. But everything is tracked in this little area right here. So, um, hundred percent of all the guitars tracked right there. Hundred percent of all the vocals tracked right here. And um, oh, okay. We also rehearse in this room as well. As well. So you know the space is you know wildly important for rehearsing, but. As far as the actual recording goes, it's all done in a very small amount of space. Okay. Well, I can hear a little bit of the room sound and stuff too, and that's that's sometimes that's what you want in your recordings, not entirely dry. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, also, we are talking like right up to a wall, but um, okay. Vocals, you know, it's I am singing it at the wall, but it's you know, it's a that's a mild distance away. Kind of kind of what you said, like the right amount where there's it's not super dry. But yeah. Yeah. 90% dry so that um that's what gates are for right put a little gate on it and you would never know yeah, yeah. it's like it's super pristine everything is very pristine that's kind of what we're going for. who owns the studio uh so our dad owned a studio in new york called conclave studios and it was relocated so oh we, awesome we were, growing up, we were just you know working at the studio uh for years picking up tricks here and there you know rolling cables but learning a little bit at the same time <laughs> yeah living but, in the studio that's how you learn yeah, no, for for sure. And you know, even though we've been, we've been playing guitar for longer, but um, I've been doing you know studio production work for probably seven or eight years now as well. So all of the production on this, um, I'm I'm spearheading now on on Cured Records. But uh, that that's a pretty long that that skill takes a long time to really acquire. Yeah. You know, like you can you can get you can get to a point where you can. Uh, record things and, and have a general understanding of how it works. But to really go from that to a professional level mix, there's a yep. pretty big, the science behind it. Pretty big gap in that. Like, yeah. It takes years and years to get there, but, um, you know, still, still constantly learning. And that's kind of what makes it so exciting. Do you, uh, do you do all this stuff too? Or are you just like, I just play guitar and I'm happy with it. Rex does most of the, um, I do the audio, but Zach's the visual. That's guy. right. I do, um, all of our social media as well as filming. Okay lighting um so whatever goes up on facebook and instagram axe effects programming that's right yeah we <laughs> off. Yeah. so we have um we each have different um like a different skill set and we uh put it all together to make our content that's yeah, perfect divide and conquer um 
So you have this the new EP coming out. Uh, it's called My Design, and literally, it's designed by you guys. And uh, I was gonna ask because um, you know I have a home studio here, and I was listening through it through my monitors and stuff, and I go. It, I wonder if this guy, because I could tell, I go, I wonder if this guy produced his own music, and I wonder what it's like if they're, because I didn't, I didn't know if you guys were signed or not, or what the deal was, but you know, how do you like having, let's say, control over your own music and your own direction, and the ability for you to be like, you know, change this in the mix, and you know what I mean, if you're mixing it yourself, and there's a lot of options. Yeah, so it's it's kind of a blessing and a curse at the same time. But um, I, I wouldn't really want to have it any other way. So yeah. we take comments from you know professional mixing engineers, guys that have won Grammy, stuff like that. We we've, we've worked with people like that, and um, you know, pick up pick up tons of of new little tricks every single time. And that that's kind of one of our mentalities is to just you know absorb as much information as we possibly can. And the way that you do that is you listen twice as much as you talk. Uh, or <laughs> that's a good one. That kind of thing. Um, but you know, it's it's fantastic that we have the ability to do all of those fine things, and then especially when we go to do it live, um, you know, there's a lot of parts that can't be played because, like, you know, a, a manufactured drum kit, like. Yeah, yeah, and you got the synth parts. I heard strings yeah. and the choruses and stuff. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, if you're working with a studio, it might be harder to get access to their tracks and stuff. But um, no, I just I just walk in here, pull mm -hmm. up a session, and uh, off we go. <laughs> So, so you guys, do you do the old, I know you play to a click, right? A lot of times yeah. or just, yep. the, or just the track without the click. No, uh, everybody has a click oh, I okay. out of my ears in a couple of spots. Um, when I'm singing, but occasionally I will give myself a guide, which also in turn kind of acts as a click. So okay. Like, bing, 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 bing. <laughs> <laughs> like just the piano in the ears of the, the vocal pitch, part. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because sometimes I, I haven't used in ears before, but I know with stage monitors, sometimes you can just completely get lost, and you're like, I don't know what I'm hearing right now because it's so it's either so loud or, you know, I was like a lot of sound guys say that you know if you don't turn your stage volume up, you'll be able to hear more with the the monitors and stuff. But I'm I'm not sure with in ears if it's like, can you hear? Is it like a you know being in a studio, kind of a CD where you can hear everything clear, but then you can also hear kind of the outside world? So we've always um, we've been running like a quiet stage. The only thing that makes noise on stage is drums. Okay. So it pretty much sounds similar to when we rehearse. We just hear like the drum kit on the stage behind us, and then we all have our own in ear mixes. So I have like a lot of guitar and a lot of click, as well as like the uh, backing tracks. Like okay. The synths and things like that. Yeah. So another way to, to, I guess, think about it is everything is self-contained. So let's say we show up to a venue and none of their monitors work. That doesn't make a difference to us as long as the PA works and if they have any center fills, you know, basically everything for the audience needs to work. But um, yeah. apart from that, we don't, we don't need anything back. So everybody has their own in your mix. Um, nice. So you can run your own stuff and be like, nah, I just want to turn that down. I don't have to say to the sound guy, turn down this. Yeah, I mean, a lot of times we'll even just strike the monitors from the stage so that we have more physical space. Wow, that's cool. Yeah, no, it's nice to not to not um, be relying on anybody else uh, in those kind of situations. And I say this a lot. I go, no offense to the sound guys out there, but it's just they they don't know each band's sound. You know what I mean? All these bands are coming in every night, and you guys know what you need and you want. And sometimes it's not on purpose, but sometimes they don't always listen to artists. <laughs> our front of house guy is um, actually our manager, so we, oh. we were pretty pretty tightly knit. Uh, Perfect. Working. So we're we are five five people when we tour. Uh, the four guys in the band and our manager, who uh, also does front of house. Wow. Uh, he also drives. I drive as well. Zach, I drive Zach, a little Zach bit. can drive, you know, a little. How old are you guys? <laughs> I am 24 and I'm 22. Okay. I was like, I don't know. They might be like 20 or something. These guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. What, uh, did you guys have different guitar styles though? When you first started, you know, did you like these bands, but then you liked, no, I would say it's, it's always been pretty much the same. We listened to a lot of dream theater and Opeth when we started, 
Um, we listen to like a lot of shred stuff together and okay, it's more like classical thing. But for the most part, we've always had like classical. Yeah, we've always had a similar taste in um, music. Yeah. More yep. recently, we've been like for guitar, but more recently, we've been listening to like um, like like different genres from each other. But I'd say we have the same guitar influences. That's cool. That's rare too in itself. Be like, you guys just put on a track right now, and you're both like. Yeah, I like that stuff. You know what I mean? You're yeah, not annoying each other. Yeah, there's there's a lot of bands that he likes that um, I don't prefer, but we do have a pretty large crossover as well. Like that's Martin cool. Stewart is probably motionless and white. Uh, we like Blackville Brides a lot. Um, yeah. But then I I also listen to like a lot of uh, Morgan Wallen, for example, and Zach doesn't like that quite as much. What about uh, you guys into like when you first learned? Did you learn Metallica, Megadeth, Ozzy, Dokken, like that kind of stuff? You know, we learned a lot of the classic riffs, but um, not we didn't quite go into studying other people's stuff right away. We actually started just like writing our own stuff more so first, and then later kind of circled back and studied what other people were doing. Oh, that's cool. That's a different way of doing it. So in, instead of it kind of ingraining in you from early on, it was more like find out what you naturally want to play. And yeah, then, you know, go study other people once you are starting to find your sound a little bit. Right. So all the guitar gurus out there, what's your favorite scale to play? Do you have like a, a scale that you guys write your songs in sort of? You know, it's like there's always like a go to. Well, listen, we're in B standard. So B minor is the obvious choice. <laughs> but, uh, Doesn't have to be. <laughs> well, I, I think it's important, though, to uh, to have songs in different keys and stuff like that. So there's a couple. Um, well, not not on my design, but you know, we're working on newer stuff now as well. So there's a couple in drop A and we covered one step closer by Linkin Park. That's in C sharp. Uh, yep. We write in C, you know, we, we try to write in every key. The one key that I don't believe we have any song in ever, now that I'm thinking about it, um, we really avoid, seem to avoid D and F now that I'm thinking about it. Mm. Right. But, you know. Just because. I mean, yeah, I, I try to think of how like it lays out into a chorus. So, you know, if you're going to be in B, your the highest note that I could probably get there would be a, you know, a B4 or B3, depending how you count it. Yeah. So, like my heart is bleeding, for example, that that is in the key of E and it goes up to that high, you know, B4, just as the highest note, like, ba -da -da, it, 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 man, yeah, oh. can I hit that or not? Yeah. For example, if I was to, you know, we could have put that song in D a whole step down and it would have been A, which would have made it a much easier note on the high end. But for whatever reason, just, just didn't want to do it in uh, mm -hmm. D. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys have seven songs and it's still an EP with seven songs. I think an album's eight. So you're just under. Well, uh, right. Physical is only the, seven. uh, the seventh is only available on the uh, physical CD. Ah, okay. The first six on um, all like streaming platforms. That makes sense. So it's a bonus track. And it uh with the um because I got I got you guys press release and stuff and I was looking at it and I go, Do you consider this kind of like your debut EP? You know how you have you always have stuff you did before? And I know your style has changed too. If you guys make sure you check them out, their music's everywhere on YouTube and Spotify and stuff. It's it's a lot of I would I would call it death metal. I, I don't know all the subgenres, but you know, all the, the kind of screaming and growling where you guys kind of first started, I know it's with their music videos, which are, which are really cool. I was going to say, who's the visual one. Now I know. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, for the music videos, um, for most of them, we've worked with, uh, Dave Brodsky, who's done most recently, like Lorna Shore. Um, he's done like a lot of revocation and Ice, ice Nine Kills. Ice Nine Kills. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, what was the question? Uh, well, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I kind of forgot too. No, I was gonna say uh, the the music videos. Uh, I don't know. You oh, see, old, folks. Uh, sometimes we oh, just oh, lose oh, our oh, minds. <laughs> I, I would consider this EP our our debut release. Like, it took us, uh, you know, five and a half ish years of professional touring to really get at a point where we're like, this is uncured. This is how we sound. This is our message. This is what we're pushing. Yeah. Um, like we talked about this a little bit before the official interview started, but um, let's break out is, you know, a, a relatively feel good song. And uh, there's a lot of the songs on the rest of this EP that are much darker. So, okay. I think um, I've, you know, I've said this before in a couple of interviews, but 
I think humans have such a wide variety of you know emotions. It's not like you have one specific sound and one specific feeling that you have all the time. So I think it yeah. makes sense to um, just to write into one specific kind of mood or energy. Yeah. Uh, in some ways, bands that do that, it feels a little bit disingenuous to me because there's so much more uh, to be expressed. And I think that you pick one specific avenue and always go to it. It's almost more about marketing than it is about real artistry. Right. Yeah, I was going to say that's probably the most commercial one I, w I would have went with, sort of. You always think about that. What's what's that side of it? But then I would say the downfall of like uh, glam metal, let's say, what you just said, a lot of it is exactly the same. They never quite went to that next level. You know what I mean? There was ballads, and then you had the faster rock tracks and all that kind of stuff, but... Like you said, you want to diversify, and I think that's that's key too. It's not just changing keys of songs either, which it's. Uh, I know it's kind of confusing for you people out there that probably don't do music, but I, I like to talk about the behind the scenes kind of stuff like that because I'm a musician myself. I love all that stuff. So <laughs> I think uh, it's it's important to just have a pretty wide variety of things, and that being said we cut plenty of songs as well. So like, yeah, you know, at the same time, you do have to understand this is too off market or this is too off brand. And we're not going to, we're not going to release this to the world as a representation of uncured and what we do. So, I mean, that kind of thing happens all the time. Yep. Uh, there's a, but what I think is really great about that, for example, is you don't limit yourself when you're writing. So we have right now for the, not even the, my design EP, but for the next release already 13 demos, Oh, wow. probably more than half of them are going to get cut because you know i'm writing something like crazy that everybody's like rex what are you doing <laughs> but I, I feel <laughs> having you know done that work written that song and then having somebody else step in and say hey we got to cut this because it, it doesn't work um, yeah. yeah you know i just feel like do as much you know do the work and then don't don't be like that connected to the point where you can't cut something that's not good yeah Zach, do you find that um, writing like songs in the in the studio is different than writing songs like say on your own, or like um, you know, like say you write a song in your room, but you, then you bring it to the studio and you're like, "Geez, um, that doesn't work." Um, for the most part, all of the uh, writing does happen in here, with um like the purpose of writing in mind. Okay, I will say that every song we write we do want it all to sound different from other songs like we don't want to release the same song eight times so yeah. it's, it's uh <laughs> it's good to have ideas that and like songs that sound completely different from one another because we always hate it when a band puts out an album and all the songs are pretty much the same so okay. uh, like but all of our writing is primarily done in this room anyway it's not um i mean I, i'm sure we it would work to like write things in other locations, but um, we haven't needed to well, I, do that yet. I guess I would just I would just frame that a little bit differently. All of the compiling and and putting all the parts together is always done in here, but a lot of times like the start of a song or the spark of an idea will come just you know when we're not really even paying attention. So like I'll just randomly humming something random or like have an idea for a lyric or something, just jot it down and you know we I actually have a just like a, a list of probably like hundred plus phrases or, or words or titles or things that I like. Yeah. That's always, what you want to do. Yeah. I just always write them down. And you know, like we talked about before, I'd say probably 85% of that is always just going to get thrown out and never see the light of day. But um, it feels really good to walk into, you know, the studio with ideas. Yeah. Some of it too is never thrown away. You can, kind of use certain phrases you'll be surprised 10 years from now you look back and you're like that's that was a cool idea let's redo this cut song from this demo and change this and and yeah. you, and all of a sudden it's like whoosh, you're adding more fuel and i think a lot of things too is songs that don't work are you know we talked about this a bit before but a good learning experience as well because if you started on it there was something in it that made you want to pursue it right yeah that piece but then at the same time, there's something that uh, makes you not want to continue pursuing it. So you get lost. Understanding that, <laughs> understanding that line and like, what about it worked? What about it didn't work? And then, yeah, like you said, you might just steal this little portion that was good, that kind of thing. 
Yeah. Yeah. It's uh it's a it's a strange thing writing music and then writing lyrics and songs and compiling it together, but you definitely want to keep a list and doing everything. It's funny if you kind of split you guys, like if you split me in half where you you're the audio guy and you're the video guy, that's kind of that's kind of me as well. I, I love the the I shoot all my own music videos and and do my my audio productions and stuff here, so it's it's nice. I've often thought I was like, what if I clone myself and I had a second person to help? And that's probably what exactly what I would do. Be like, you do the film stuff, whatever. I'll do the audio. Yeah, no, so. it's, pretty, it's pretty convenient because I personally don't enjoy doing camera stuff. Like it's, uh -huh. it does. I just don't like it. So, okay. It's, it's really nice to just get to delegate that. Not going to sit down and do the frame by frame, the, you know, all the stuff. Yeah, I'm not not a fan. <laughs> okay. But you can do it editing wise, right? You you go set, you know, oh, second audio. by second. Yeah, no, I I love audio editing exactly. That's funny. They're similar though. They really are. Yeah, um, I guess you know, Pro Tools just feels very familiar and comfortable, and uh, even though I can work in Premiere, it it feels very clumsy. Yeah. I'm sure, if I were to dedicate more time to it, then it yeah, would, for sure. You know, it would do you do you edit the music videos too, or you just come up with like the plot and the ideas and. For, uh, no, so um, like all of our official music videos are usually done by uh, Dave Brodsky. Yep. Um, all of like our like uh, guitar playthroughs or studio videos or like um, videos shot in the studio here, I do all that. Okay. Well, let's break out. We did one official music video, but we did about like 12 or 13 promotional videos. Um, so Dave Brodsky did the music video, edited that and um the Zach, reels that you've been seeing on your instagram all of the reels from the studio like we did some with fog in here with like um a bunch of lights in just this room it's more of like a playthrough of the song yeah like playthrough but it also needs to look cool because that's what you have to do for social media nowadays yeah yeah it's i don't know how to describe it you always got to put on a show or something it's got to be something intriguing there's so much that you're competing with and it's hard to capture attention, right? So um, obviously we're, what we, what we do needs to be, let me choose my word. Let me, let me choose my words. <laughs> I was going to say, uh, we want to be able to capture somebody's attention, right? But you know, we're not um, just trying to put out brain rot. I'll, I'll put it that way, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I know what you mean. It, well, what I was going to say, too, is I can answer it maybe for you, is it pertains to what you're doing. It pertains to the music video. I actually thought it was like you guys probably just did that as extra footage while you were on the music video set for that reason to have oh. later. So you fooled me. Yeah. No, no that was <laughs> And um, you know, when we had the, the, what, nine girls on set, it was just all about shooting the dance scenes and stuff. Yeah, and they all had guitars, too. It ended away. I was like, that's interesting. And I was going to mention, I have never seen a hard rock band dance in a song. So we, we don't really dance. What's the story behind that? So I'm kind of flirting with dancing in that video, but not <laughs> we're not, like, together. Um, but, you know, the girls are dancing, which we've talked about this before. I just think it's unusual that... Um, dancing has been strictly relegated to what like two or three genres so pop, yeah yep pop and rap right like there's no other genres that really have dances so maybe a little country if you count the line dancing kind of stuff ah uh, it's dance, different that's more of an activity dance. but i i understand what you're saying. The <laughs> yeah. point is like nobody can really argue that case for rock and metal it's just been completely separate so yeah i don't, I don't think that makes sense and especially because let's break out is an active rock song with elements of metal, but also elements of pop, strong elements of pop on that one. Um, I thought that was the perfect song to have dancers because I've been wanting to do that for a long time and just yeah. the uh, right song to do it for. Different, it was a very different idea too. When I we, uh, we have another video uh, coming that we actually just saw. Two actually. Yeah, two more that we just saw. One of them we just saw the draft for and uh, it's brutal, it's visceral for a much heavier song. Okay. So, for anybody that wants to say uncured is too soft, uh, we got another thing coming. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have that background, you know what I mean, where a lot of a lot of stuff was was screaming and growling and yeah. you know real heavy and intense. And then I was like, okay, you know they're they're getting into the singing now. You even did like a kind of an acoustic cover song. I think during COVID it came out. Yeah, the yeah, Adventure of Highway. Yeah, that was like really really different. 
you know what I mean? Which is not necessarily bad because you, you kind of want to throw people off every once in a while. Right. Yeah, you got to keep them on their feet. Like, yep. as, as we said before, we can't, uh, you don't want every song to sound the same um, from like the same album as well as like album to album. Yeah. Um, if you're like making a TV show, every episode can't be the same. <laughs> sure it can, man. There's a lot of them today. <laughs> hey, listen, you watch Criminal Minds? I, I like watching that show because it's the exact same episode oh. every time. I know within 40 minutes, they're going to catch the killer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and there you go. <laughs> exactly. I, I was I, always a fan of you guys like horror movies, but like Twilight Zone and that kind of stuff because it's, it's uh, you know, it messes with your psyche, some of it, or it's, or it's smart horror. You know, I mean, there's a different story every week, let's say. No, I, I'm a pretty big fan of horror movies in general. Um, like a lot of you know, a lot of the more psychological ones, but also I'm not above watching like torture porn as well. Like like hostile. That genre of like like the Saw movies, for example. Oh, like, Saw movies are really good. They they have a essence of um I don't know. You know, a little bit of the Halloween and the Jasons and stuff, but it's yeah, it's a little funny. It's kinda got yeah. that like comedic edge in some ways, or it's where it's a little bit more self aware rather, I should say. Yeah. And you guys uh Everyone, I, I just noticed this. So you guys like to work out. We were talking a little bit about maybe talking about some food. <laughs> so, <laughs> I like to talk about other things, you know. So, well, I'm curious, how does it relate to you with your singing? Because I know you can't just eat anything you want and then go on stage and, you know what I mean? Some things, do you stay away from some things? Uh, so the most interesting thing about my physiology and singing that I've realized is um all dairy no 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 well i'll i'll go sure we'll go into detail so uh my dad just had a hernia surgery our dad just had a hernia surgery okay i went to my uh general annual physical my annual physical thank you and the doctor was like hey you have a pre-hernia you might have one in the future so i went to uh our dad's hernia surgeon (laughs) okay I i asked him like you know general questions and stuff and he was like so what i think is happening here is your diaphragm is two to three inches lower than the average males so like like even though even when i get really lean you know i got like a i'm dense here like like i'm i'm big (laughs) (laughs) that's because my diaphragm has dropped down like two to three inches so i mean he was saying that might cause a little bit of pressure on your organs intestines all that kind of stuff i was like whatever doctor i don't care but it's not it's not it has to do with working out or anything it's just a natural thing no, no it has to do with singing running and working out so um, oh, okay my breath capacity has just like improved and improved and improved and uh, as a result my diaphragm has dropped so that i can hold more air in my lungs so like i could you know i could clean up if i was like betting somebody i can bet you i can hold my breath longer than you like yeah what's the downfall of that I guess maybe one day a hernia. hernia. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! But you know the thing is, you get surgery six weeks later, you're cleared to go. So I'm I'm not concerned about it. And um, frankly, yeah. I would make that trade for great breath capacity. Yeah, yeah. Do you, what? So do you do vocal warm ups? Do you do you know for guitar stuff? What do you What do you do? You just kind of run through things, or? Well, we always do like a pre show ritual. We always warm up. At, as much as you can before sometimes it's hectic if it's like um you know a crowded backstage and you got to get your stuff set up uh you, you know, have no like, time like i always try to get changed in advance and then um, warm up the guitar as much as i can if like another band is playing yeah but sometimes like you can't get to the guitars because they're buried behind other people's stuff so that's it's always unfortunate when you can't um then do you do the air guitar or you start to move your fingers and you're like yeah. okay I mean, I that would say, be. Let's just here. Let's show them. This is this is what I always put on guitar warm up. Is the John Petrucci. Oh wow! On acoustic? Well, no. no this is, <laughs> and you always play. I don't even have a pick. Oh yeah. I mean, I just like to warm up with basic, like um, chromatic stuff. Just whether it's. That's what I yeah one two three four. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone knows the spider exercise where you like keep your fingers on the strings. That's a good one. Yeah. And I call it I call it the crawl. Yeah. And That's probably some... one of the best exercises you could you could start with, mm-hmm. I think. For like Do you start that fast though? Or do you start like really, really, really slow? I mean something that's simple. 
I'd only start really slow if my hands are cold. Oh, and okay. Round two, where it's like like uh, you know, ten degrees outside, you're freezing. We did a tour in Canada in the winter. My feet were cold the entire time, like <laughs> all month, the whole month and a half. So like, come on, man! You're like a boxer jumping up and down. Yeah, Let's it's, go. It's, you never like start lifting a heavy weight if you're cold. Like I would not try to play something fast or that had stretches if my hands are cold. Yeah. But, um, what was like, we have, but like if your hands are cold, you just do easy stuff. And then there's like um, the stretching exercise where you like keep a fret in between each finger, and it's harder on like uh, the seven string with the bigger scale. So. Yep. Yep. What about uh, vocally? Uh, vocally, I do a. Um, what my you know, voc a vocal coach I've worked with, he calls a vocal ease track. So it's not okay. technically a warm up track. It's actually something that's just supposed to relax your voice and kind of um, vocalize. Put it, yeah, put it in a in a different state. So uh, it, I mean, it does work as a warm up as well. And, uh, and then I'll frequently pick like one song per tour that I'll sing half of as like my you know my pre show song. So like when we okay. Tour, Carn Effects, for example, it was Morgan Wallen's cover of Cover Me Up. Hmm. Um, when we did this last tour with Butcher Babies and Lacuna Coil, it was uh, Burn It Down by Linkin Park. So, you know, just basically any song that's kind of in that pretty easy range. Um, yep, yep. Burn It Down, I didn't sing the chorus uh, because it, it was too high as a warm-up. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, I was like, you're going to be screaming that? <laughs> no, no, no. I'll just like casually, like lightly sing the verses. Um yeah, so I'd, I'd like to pick one song and just kind of, you know, know how it feels in, I guess, in the body as you sing it, that kind of thing. Yeah, what about lip trills and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> all that. Yeah, that's a good for you. I always call it the motorcycle. He was revving up the motorcycle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Those with your tongue slightly out and always start voiceless because. Um, oh, really? The very first exercise that I do, and I always start them voicelessly because you want to make sure that. Uh, the breath support is coming first and foremost. And then, you know, the notes themselves are just traveling through that same stream of energy. So. Uh, yeah, that's, that's good advice. I like that. And I guess one other thing I do since we're on the topic is in the mornings, I do not speak for roughly an hour to two hours. Um, I guess like if I have to, that's different, but I, I try, try very strictly not to. So. It takes um, a full hour for like hydration to hit your vocal cords. It's one of the last things to get hydrated. Oh, okay. So like, let's say you wake up, immediately pound a bunch of water. You have enough water in you to be hydrated, but it hasn't necessarily gotten your vocal cords yet. So um, everybody knows that, you know, if your cords are dehydrated or they're too swollen, like that's, you know, if you're singing or speaking a lot on that, that's where you can kind of have those problems. But um so I'll wait an hour, and then the first thing I do before I actually start speaking is I have a cup of water with a big boba straw in it, and um, I'll basically just do, like, blowing bubbles and then blowing bubbles on um, yep. donation. Kind of yep. slide. That's yeah. what my vocal coach says. Do it in, a, like, a bottle. Yeah, it's, it's fantastic for you because um, that's one of the only ways to, have you know, close the circuit of your vocal tract. So, like, without the pressure of singing because you have you have pressure coming from you know from yourself internally yeah and there's no way to close that system besides this one specific thing so what it does is it kind of relieves some of the pressure coming from here by um just like causing more of an equilibrium okay that's probably the best advice any artist has said on here vocally <laughs> that i've had besides my vocal coach because i've had her on she said stuff similar but she was, uh, she worked with, uh, we had James Michael from 6am and she was in his band and, uh, I, w I work with her on, on some vocal stuff and she says a lot of that stuff is in the straws. I finally bought those vocal straws cause she's big on them and they're like these different millimeters and it depends on how you're feeling, you know? Yeah. So there, there's usually three main straw sizes. They have the titsy straw. The like regular bendy straw size and then the boba straw. And I always prefer the boba straw because yep. um, I guess it, it feels like there's less back pressure from that one. Whereas if you have the small one, then obviously you have to kind of 
push more air through and less comes back at you. I think. Yeah, I read it where it's it depends on your voice too. Like you want to work on your high voice, the thin one, and this and that. I'm like, I'm using the thick one. That's fine. I would say <laughs> for a male that kind of speaks in like regular lower range. Um, you know, you don't sound like like Charlie that De- Charlie Kelly from It's Always Sunny. Uh, yeah, you should, you should probably be doing a, a thick straw. Yeah, like me. Are <laughs> you? Yeah. I would definitely use a boba straw, and obviously, the more water you put in, the more it'll probably feel relaxing. Like if it's just a little bit, then it's you know closer to just regular phonation. Yeah. Love that advice. Everybody tuning in here on Radio Wigwam, Palangi Studios of Rock. What's going on, everybody? Make sure you tune in here on our social media. Let us know where you're from. This will be available on YouTube as well as you see me right now. Hello, everybody. And, um, you know, we're going to have reruns of all my interviews, too, on on the station and the show. So, And it all goes to Mixcloud, too, after, guys. So you can definitely check all that stuff out. Now, before we go here, do you have... Two questions, maybe, maybe three. But what uh, what other guitars do you have besides Schecter's? And do you play other instruments? Let's start off with those two, really quick. Um, I would say out of all the guitars we have here, almost all of them are Schecter. We only have a few that we got like before we were Schecter artists, like um, this acoustic that we had here, which we got when um, right at the beginning, our first acoustic. Long time ago. Yeah, yeah so everything we've gotten since becoming Schecter artists has been uh, Schecter. Yep. But we do have just like a couple other instruments, like, you know, a Music Man bass. Um, well, okay. Ibanez guitar, yeah. Uh, what about vocal mic? What do you use? Uh, just classic SM58 wireless. We oh, okay. Did, we did try, um, oh, and, and two wired ones um, for Zach and Micah, but I use wireless. And we, we did try a variety of different ones, like, you know, different, um, like, you know, cardiac microphones, different kind of stuff. and AKG and Sennheiser yeah. and whole bunch whole variety i think we tried like six um cat audio shout out to cat audio everywhere for hooking me up with this <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we just found that you know the, the best one overall for a live performance was the classic sm7 well sm58 i always used the beta for tons and tons of years love the beta but um i switched over to sc with the miles kennedy mic i just i love that now love it but, uh, yeah i think i know what you're talking about yeah, they come out with he was the first artist signature, I think. Then I think they have another one out now, but it's so you know, it's tour rugged and how he describes it. It's I, I actually, you know, I think it's better than the beta. I mean I've used it for years, but I was like, this is a, it's a little bit condenserous at the same time. That's not a word, but well <laughs> out of a condenser, yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um I forgot my other question on here, but so the other songs on your EP. When oh, when's your EP come out? Uh, June second is the current um, uh, potential release date. If it get, it could get moved back, but that's what we're aiming for at the moment. All right. Now you said the other songs are some brutal ones on there. Is there uh, is there a ballad on there? Yes, yes. there is a ballad. Yep. So now we're we gonna have slow dancing in that in that video too. No, that's uh. As it's got a different energy to it. Okay. <laughs> now, is it a breakup? You like slow songs? Everyone thinks it's a breakup. You know? Uh, no. I mean, there's there's elements of you know, it elements based on relationship things, but it it's got a a, a different uh, point yeah, to more it, of an emotional song. Okay. And um, we have you got a big tour coming up too, and uh, you have a couple of huge festivals. Talk about those quick. That's right. So we got uh, Welcome to Rockville coming up in May, I believe. And then we also have Incarceration in July. Sweet. And plan to have like um, a lot of U.S. states running into and out of those shows. So um, that should all be coming soon. It's still in the works, but um, uh, still to come. Awesome. Those are those are huge shows. You get on those. Oh, yeah. We're the audience still- will go. Pew! Yeah. <laughs> And, and everyone too. I noticed. I I didn't know it until I looked it up. But you know, Hate Breed singer, Hate Breed sing with you guys. Butcher Babies. Other other artists have gotten on stage and sang with you, which is really cool. Oh yeah, it's yeah. fantastic. We got yeah, we got to play uh, Destroy Everything in front of five thousand people in Germany. That was awesome. <laughs> Man, so you guys, what's it like going overseas versus playing here in uh, in the U.S.? 
Well, we've uh, gotten to play in South America once for a tour and Europe once for a tour. And they were both uh, quite fantastic experiences because like South America was our first time there, but we had a great crowd reception. People already knew us. And it's so different from the United States because we're flying between shows as opposed to like driving. Yeah. The, the fans there are just so energetic and they just love their metal and rock so much. And um, we definitely can't wait to go back there. Awesome. Well, look for these guys out this year. I know you got some dates in March and you have some stuff coming up. So they're going to keep announcing things, I'm sure, as time goes on. That's the way it works. You know, it's always like... Uh, hurry up and wait. Yeah, that's right. We have to begin. Yeah. So thanks, guys. We got Rex and Zach from the band Uncured here on Palangi Studio of Rock, only here on Radio Wigwam. Any last words and advice, maybe, if you guys have for... I always ask this for up-and-coming artists or artists in, in your situation. I would I would recommend to have a mindset that, you know, constantly propels you forward right so um don't don't get let yourself get like sucked into like a circle of negativity just always be looking for um you know a way to improve even if it's like one percent per day right uh, yeah constant, constantly stay on that uh mentality of of uh every i guess everything is a journey and you're just trying to be as good as you possibly can that's right all right. Words of wisdom, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you guys soon.